Welcome to our online service of readings, prayer and song. We are delighted that schools from all over the diocese have joined this celebration to help us all prepare for the coming season of Christmas. On a practical note, please make sure that your computer microphones are on mute and a reminder to those who are doing their readings live to turn your microphones back on at the right time. This service is being recorded where possible, do keep your camera feed open. That will give us a greater sense of being together. I now invite Archbishop John to formally start our service with a few words and our opening prayer. Patrick, thank you very much. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, it's really nice to see you. I can see some of you waving back at me, so that's really, really lovely. Give me a wave if you can. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm speaking to you here from my little chapel here at Archbishop's house. And we're towards the end of the school term, looking forward to Christmas. And, and perhaps at home you've got decorations up. Here's my little crib here and the Advent wreath. So we're going to begin this lovely service which prepares our hearts for Christmas by praying together. Let's make together, first of all, the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our loving Father, you sent your son, the Lord Jesus, to be born for us and to live a life like ours. He shows us how much you love the world and how much you love every person. He teaches us how to love each other. Let the light of love shining from the Christ child in the stable at Bethlehem always shine in our hearts until we reach our true home in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we will begin with some children, some pupils from St. Thomas in Canterbury to tell us about the Annunciation. The Annunciation, based on Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Mary was a faithful young woman who lived in Nazareth. She was engaged to Joseph, a man who was of the house of David. One day, as Mary was doing her chores, the angel Gabriel appeared in the room and spoke. Rejoice, you who enjoy God's favour. The Lord is with you. Mary was surprised and confused as Gabriel continued. Do not be afraid, Mary, for God has chosen you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, who you will name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestors David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The child will be holy and will be called the Son of God. After all of these years of being unable to have a baby, your cousin, Elizabeth, despite being quite old, is also to have a son and is now six months pregnant, for nothing is impossible to God. Mary thought about what Gabriel had said before responding. You, have, you see before you the Lord serv Lord's servant. Let it happen to me as you have said. Then the angel returned to God. Thank you. That was a wonderful retelling of the, of the Annunciation. Mary's choice was to say yes to God, even though she knew that the task God had given her would not be easy and would also lead to great sorrow. She had trust in God and wanted to serve him. Mary provides us with an example of how we should trust in God and want to serve him. This Advent, we think of the times God has asked us to serve him. Do we always say yes, even when the task is difficult? Now we will reflect to a clip of a group singing the Angel Gabriel. Is 
Dreams as drifted snow his arms of All hail said he the lowly maid and most highly favored lady. Now some pupils from St. Anthony's in Dulwich will share with us the visitation. Mary quickly set out to visit her cousin Elizabeth to see if what the angel Gabriel had said was true. As soon as Elizabeth heard Mary say hello, the child in her womb leaped for joy and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why, I, why am I honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the child in my womb leaped for joy. Oh. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord be fulfilled. 
Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the loneliness of his servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for, the has, for he has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms, he has sent the proud hearted. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with his and the rich with He has his servant Israel in remembering his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and then returned to her home in Nazareth. Thank you. That was a wonderful reading. Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah were faithful to God, just as Mary was. Despite having been married for many years, they had no children. Elizabeth's pregnancy was an unexpected miracle. Neither Elizabeth nor Zechariah knew their baby would grow up to be John the Baptist, a prophet, prophet of God. As her baby leapt for joy at the sound of Mary's voice, Elizabeth realized her cousin was the mother of the Lord. This Advent, we think of times we have recognized Christ in others we encounter. Do we see Christ in the faces and works of our teachers, those who are part of our NHS, our supermarket workers and other key workers? Do we immediately welcome them with the same joy as Elizabeth welcomed Mary? And now we will have two students from Christ the King, sixth form, singing the Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. 
Thank you. That was beautiful. And now we have a pupil from St. Matthew Academy reading about the road to Bethlehem. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all those in the known world should be registered. It was expected that every man would take their family and go to the town of their ancestors to be registered and counted. Joseph had to travel from Nazareth to a city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. Mary had to go with him, although she was heavily pregnant and the journey was going to be long and uncomfortable. Joseph had found a donkey to carry Mary and everything they needed for the journey. They travelled many miles over many days. Mary was very uncomfortable as it was nearly time for her baby to be born. Once they arrived in Bethlehem, Joseph asked many innkeepers if they had room for his family. Due to the large travellers in the town, all the inns were full. Finally, a kindly innkeeper offered Joseph and Mary shelter in his stable. Thank you for that wonderful reading. Joseph knew the journey was going to be difficult for Mary, but he had no other choice. He tried to make it as easy for her as possible, protecting Mary and her unborn baby along the way. He would have been disappointed that a stable was the best accommodation that was available. This Advent, we think of those who've undertaken long and arduous journeys, sometimes against their will or unplanned. Do we try to make their journeys easier by helping to provide safe passage? Do we welcome them once they arrive in our land? For the next song, if your teachers allow it, perhaps you can sing along, or if you know some actions, perhaps you can do those instead. And now we will hear Jesus is Born from pupils in St. Peter and St. Paul in Merton.
Okay, this is a recording. There we go. Mary and Jason. Hmm. Comfortable as possible. It was time for Mary to give birth and Jesus was born. Mary wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger as there was nowhere else for him to be kept safe. Thank you. Mary and Jesus settled down. Thank you for that short reading. And now we will go into the reflection. Having a baby in a stable must have been a bit scary. However, Mary and Joseph would have been grateful for the safety and warmth it offered. Placing the newly born Jesus in a manger, which is something animals eat from, reminds us of the humbleness of Jesus' birth. This year has forced us to become humble and to celebrate a Christmas where we will have to limit the amount of family and friends we visit. When participating in all the activities we think of as tradition will not be possible. Let us now reflect on the wondrous gift we have been given, Jesus. And now we will have a performance by Notre Dame Secondary School of Silent Night. Thank you, that was beautiful. And now we have some pupils from St. Mary's in Wimbledon to tell us about the shepherds in the fields. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Suddenly an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. The shepherds cowered as the angel said, 
Do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothing and lying in a manger. Suddenly, many more angels appeared, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace among those whom, whom he favours. When the angels had left the fields and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this event which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off to Bethlehem. There they found Mary and Joseph in a stable and the child lying in a manger. When they saw him, they told Mary about the glorious angel who had come to them in the field. The shepherds also told her that one angel said this child was the Christ the Lord. Mary, Mary treasured their words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned to the fields glorified and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Thank you for that wonderful reading. In the time of Jesus' birth, being a shepherd was not a nice job. Shepherds were expected to live outdoors with the sheep and were often very poor and not educated. They were seen as being as important, not as, as important as those who worked in towns. Seeing the angels would have caused them great fright at first, but the message would have made them feel special and awestruck. That the shepherds felt the need to travel from the hills to Bethlehem shows how much they were affected by the angels and their message. They felt the need to visit Jesus and to bring a gift. Their gift was sharing their story and letting Mary know that her son had come for all. This Advent, we remember the times when we have been awestruck by God's glory in our world. Do we take the time to thank God for giving us great gifts? We are asked to think about the gifts we can give Christ. Are we able to give him the gift of sharing his message? And now we have the year, one of the year six classes from St. Fidelis to sing all over the hills.
Thank you for that. And now we will hand over to Archbishop John, who will say a few final words and give us the blessing. Well, thank you very much for all those who helped us in word and song and drama to prepare ourselves to celebrate the coming of Christ at Christmas. I think everyone deserves a big round of applause. Give them a big round of applause. Absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. I was thinking as I was hearing you and watching you, um, and it's so lovely to see you across the diocese, our big family of education, Catholic education in our diocese. Great to see you. I was thinking, what's the easiest way for us to understand and communicate what Christmas means? And it struck me that a simple way is just to count it on our fingers with the simple phrase that is said by Gabriel to Mary, which is said by God to all of us. So count it with me if you can, just put your hand up. We're gonna count it on our fingers. Yeah, if someone says to you, what's the meaning of Christmas? If someone says to you, what did you do at school today to celebrate the coming of Christmas? Say, this is what it's about. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with me. This is what it's about. That the Lord, the Son of God, our friend, the great gift of God's love in the person of Jesus, is with us and is with you. And especially if you're feeling sad at any time, or a bit fed up and a bit lonely, you're a bit anxious or worried about something, remind yourself, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with us. I want to thank all our schools, our family of schools across the diocese, for all they've done this year. It's been a challenging year, and I'm so grateful to everyone for the part they've played, including our Education Commission too. I hope that as school comes to a close, whatever way you celebrate Christmas, it is a time of peace and joy for you and for your loved ones. And so we ask God's blessing upon us now as we go out, as we go home, as we go forward in faith and hope and love towards the celebration of Christmas. So let us pray. God our Father, when your son was born of the Virgin Mary and cared for by St. Joseph, her husband, shepherds brought gifts of lambs and kings brought gifts of frankincense, gold and myrrh. This Christmas, we ask you to fill our hearts with love, joy and peace so that we might show in our lives the love you show us in the great gift of the Lord Jesus. We ask you to bless us, our families, those we live with, and our friends. We ask you too to bless those who will go hungry this Christmas, who will be alone or homeless, or sick, or separated from their loved ones. May we each play our part in sharing the hope that Christ brings as our Lord, our Saviour, and our friend. And may Almighty God bless all of you and those you love this Christmas and into this new year. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, just before I go, you've been very kind, so many of you, in speaking and singing and helping us. So I'm going to sing to you. <clears throat> and it's a very simple message to wish you every blessing for Christmas. So here we go. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Give me a wave if you can see me. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Archbishop John. Thank you very much to everyone who has been part of this. A thank you to um, those in the background who pressed all the bright buttons at the right time and made sure that we got through this without any glitches. You may have noticed that loads of people have been leaving messages in the 
chat space and as I speak there's loads more coming through so if you have the opportunity to say a, a greeting in in the chat then that'd be fabulous and in the meantime have a lovely day and our thoughts and prayers are with you throughout this coming Christmas season take care god bless thank you very much Oh, <laughs> <laughs>